In Tower Defense Simulator, two of the most used towers are the Commander and DJ. They both provide support in different ways, so deciding which one to bring can be a hard choice. In today's video, I will compare the Commander and DJ to determine which is the better support tower. To start off, we have the Commander. This tower will passively increase the fire rate of all towers within its range. Level 0, Commander has a passive 10% fire rate buff to all towers within its range. Later on, it increases to 15%, 20%, and 25% at max level. Commander also has an ability named Call to Arms. After being triggered, all towers within Commander's range will have their fire rate increased by 30% for 10 seconds. This increases the passive buff to 45%, 50%, and 55% at max. Commander's boost in fire rate is really helpful. For example, a level 2 minigunner has a base fire rate of 0.12 and a damage of 3, having a DPS of 25. If you place down a commander at level 0 for only $650, the minigunner will have a fire rate of 0.1. This increases its DPS to 40. You get 15 more DPS for only $650, which is really helpful. Let's do another example. A minigunner at max level has a damage of 10 and a fire rate of 0.1. If you have a max commander, the fire rate decreases to 0.08, coming out to a total DPS of 125. This may sound bad, but you have to remember this is passive. If you use the call to arms ability, the fire rate decreases to 0.06, coming out to a total DPS of 166.7. That's a 66.7 in damage increase. What makes Commander so good is the Call to Arms ability is chainable if you know what you're doing, making the Commander's 55% fire rate buff permanent. Overall, the Commander is very helpful for getting extra DPS out of towers like the Minigunner and Accelerator, and is definitely a core tower in most strategies. That's enough for the Commander for now, let's move on to the DJ. At level 0, DJ gives a passive 10% range buff to all towers within its range. This also increases to 15%, 25%, and 35% at max level. Also, DJ at level 3 gains the ability to discount towers within its range by 10%, increasing to 20% at max level. DJ's range buff and discount can be useful, for example, a level 2 minigunner without support towers has a range of 16, but if you place down a level 0 DJ, its range will increase to 17.1, that's a 1.1 range increase for only $600, which isn't bad. Let's consider a max minigunner now. At level 4, the minigunner has a range of 18 without support towers, but if you throw in a max DJ, the range increases to 24.3, which is huge, that is a 6.3 range increase. The range increase alone is really helpful because maps like Polluted Wastelands 2 may be too big for the minigunner to see old loops. But DJ also has a discount buff. Minigunner without DJ costs $19,900 to max out, but with DJ, it's only $16,420 to max out. You save $3,480 with DJ, which may not sound huge, but when you use towers like the Accelerator, which by default are really expensive, those savings can help a lot. DJ overall is a really good support tower, it is good for game modes like Hardcore where everything is more expensive, and it is good for maps like Polluted Wastelands too. Now that I've gone over the pros of both Commander and DJ, which one is truly better? Well, the results are in, and the winner is... It's the Dangler Empire. Why set up for fictional buffs when you can get some real buffs? What are these buffs? Well, by joining the Discord in the description, you get to see exclusive leaks to my next video, you get to see my videos early, and hey, you get to even talk to me. So join to get some real buffs and help the Empire grow. Alright guys, uh, I got hacked. Anyways, the winner is... The Commander. Overall, the commander is way more valuable in layouts, and if you don't own the right towers, commander is practically a must-have to win. On the other hand, I didn't pick DJ because in most solo games, you usually have enough money to afford expensive towers. Also, most towers have plenty or reasonable range, that you don't need that extra range from DJ. And then again, you could just shell and move up your towers. Oh wait. DJ is not useless. There's a few things I didn't include in this video. In the recent special game modes, bosses like the Gunslinger and Watch the Fox have an ability to reduce range by 50%. This is really horrible because towers with little to no range will suffer a lot because of it. But if you bring DJ, the effect will be reduced to be not as bad. Also, you can just bring friends. Honestly, whenever I play with friends, we strategize our layouts to both contain Commander and DJ. In fact, DJ and Commander are a serious and strong duo, and I think it's better to bring them both. So in the end, 
the best tower was the friends we made along the way.